Boom. Recording and alive, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be going over Bitcoin's price. Yeah, you guessed it. And we're going to be taking a look at the DeFi sector almost as a whole and Binance as they've gone into this space as well. I want to be very clear. So we'll be going over a few of these. I'm not exactly sure which ones, but most likely uh, we're going to take a look at Comp, uh, Kyber Network. Uh, we've got Wi-Fi, a bunch of the ones that we hadn't looked during the hype. And now that they've had a little bit of a cool down, we're interested to see where they go next as they were a strong leading indicator for momentum during the last pullback, actually in orders of magnitude. So I'm going to start off. Well, we've got BNB on the chart but more specifically we're going to start with bitcoin because i think it's important to keep again the large time frame in perspective of the overall ecosystem bitcoin is our market alpha it provides us the value to build around effectively especially in the DeFi sector so we saw you know or like a, a year into almost two years into an accumulation range in bitcoin one of the big things that's going to signal something nice for us is a run to around fourteen or sixteen thousand dollars for a nice break out of the box for our backup phase it's a clear sign that uh, we're going to have more momentum hasn't happened yet so I'm going to wait for it. In the meantime, it does look like on the four hour, we have moved into a sideways uh, trading range here. So this is going to be important to keep an eye on. At the moment, there's no need for me even to try to pontificate about this price. It's too early on. Let's give it another week. We'll come back to it. For now, it's staying stable, which is nice. Uh, we will then take a quick look at Ethereum as it's basically our DeFi uh table <laughs> to some degree or another so here we have um the ethereum versus us dollar chart on the daily um i had speculated that we were going to see a, a trading range form inside of these green lines here now we are just kind of moving up on the second regression line uh, on by on the ethereum token which you can see here now one of the interesting points about right here is the movement up this regression line is likely going to either hit the top around 430 or it's going to break down and could come as low as 250 dollars you know so there's a bunch of big things in the market that could definitely scare the markets down lower so we don't try to predict we just see that there are obvious areas uh but m there's a very this is a very strong regression line we've hit on and at the very least the <laughs> lowest regression line is down here at 180. um and that could be the case you know inevitably maybe the stock market crashes and everything goes to heck and we're in civil war around the world and bombs are going off i have no idea what's going to happen i actually think that's probably a few years <laughs> out but um, in the meantime, what we do is we just watch frequently so that we can observe and learn more about the patterns that we're watching. So we did have a nice distribution take place in Ethereum here. Um, as you can see, it's been continuing to distribute. Here is your UTAD. Here's your lower uh, point of supply and another, again, a lower point of supply strength. So um, it is likely we do come lower in Ethereum. But what's been interesting to me is um, Link and the rest of the DeFi sector. So I took a really quick trade in the private bear group for those of you that were awake at that moment. Um, I made a really quick entry into Chainlink at this purple line here, and I exited last night around the top, mostly because this looked like a really beautiful distribution, and I saved all that in the private den. So if you're in the private den, you can look in always in our live trading chat about those things. So I um, went long here just to uh, chew up a few more link and then I closed out that position um, and I'm waiting for a lower reaccumulation re area to form. The DeFi sector is going to be extremely big. Now I'm gonna do more and more effort, I'm gonna put in more and more effort to bring it in a somewhat palpable manner because I think it's so important and it's so difficult. Like I'm having a difficult time keeping up because there's so many things that are happening like even today what we're about to go over just in price action is going to be a lot of information um so with chain link here we saw our quick run to the top of the box there's also a distribution on the lower time frames i do suspect we are going to build a nice big reaccumulation box probably somewhere around this trading range i would look for that as likely the primary um, this might have been the primary support and the automatic rally i doubt it more more likely we're going to see a selling climax or a primary support and a selling climax down here at around five dollars um so technically link is leaning us into a more bit more of a 
bearish signal, but again, I'm just looking for when to take an entry into a reaccumulation because I believe that we're witnessing a wave four. So I'm going to use a few examples here. Um, I was not really interested in the DeFi sector up until now because it's cooled down. So here with Kyber, you can see we had a really nice out of the box move in the beginning of December. We carried up, we had our first uh, LPS and breakout, and we've just closed below this now. So this um, this new regression line that we're forming here, um, I'm going to look for a close above uh, this top uh, in, in Kyber Network. I believe it would be a wave four. It would give us a lot of move and a lot of momentum. But again, I'm waiting for the turnaround before I look at it. But what made me look at this was I made a very quick trade yesterday on Wi-Fi. Again, just kind of messing around because I like trading. It works my pattern recognition skills. I'm like, oh, great. Look, here's a, an accumulation range on a lower time frame, right? There's my spring. There's the LPS. Here's your backup. So I entered here with Wi-Fi and I closed out last night in a very short, like just a 10% trade for the day. The reason I did that is because I'm interested in gaining more attention for myself in this sector. Now, we could potentially go, okay, well, you know, this is a giant head and shoulders. We're not above the uh, longest trend line yet. Um, but I want to keep an eye on the sector because I believe it has a lot of room to grow. So same with Algo actually sitting in that DeFi sector as well. It looks like, okay, here's our primary support, our selling climax, our automatic rally. I believe that we are entering into our um, accumulation range uh, near the bottom of the box on Algorand before we have another big breakout. So this is why I now sell 70 to 90% of my position on, on the tops of the SOSs and I'm patient to rebuy back in because I'm happy with a 50% trade in a short period of time. It was 140% on Algorand, but on some of the other ones, it's 50 around Matic, 60 for BAT, etc. But these long drawn out all the way to the bottom of the box um, supply tests in, in a low liquidity market during some fearful times can be really difficult. So I generally uh, want to keep an eye on this and, and not make an entry until we see a nice shift in, in character. So we're going to be taking a look at a lot more of things like uh, synthetics. Uh, you've got serum. We've got compound. Um, compound looks like it's in a, in a really nice position to do a run to the top of the box. So something like this. Here you can let's assume we've got our automatic rally, our secondary test, our spring is probably going to maybe push a little lower here, uh, maybe in through November too. So I'd keep a close eye on here, but uh, even still, you wait for that bottom that bottom of the box uh, to be confirmed, and then uh, we've got a nice new trading range. It looks like in comp probably for the next 120 days. I do assume that these sideways trading ranges we're witnessing in the DeFi sector are going to line up with our larger plays into the new year. So this is the perfect time to recognize we are still in accumulation. We are finally in the accumulation area for the DeFi sector, so I'm excited about that. You've got, uh, well, things like, see, Lend and LRC are a little high for me. More interestingly, I'll put this one on the table. Uh, Avalanche, guys, I've gotten word from our tech and development side, um, Chris, that uh, Avalanche is a big, uh, b something big to pay attention to. So I've got a bunch of notifications set up around Avalanche. Um, I, I, from now on, I just, I go, great, looks, look, looks interesting. Let's keep an eye on it. So I'm, I'm heavily pivoting into the DeFi sector over the next little while because all of the momentum we saw um, mostly came in through the DeFi sector. You've got things like th uh, Theta and T-Fuel. T Hats out to all the Arcane Bear members who are trading that one. I wasn't in on there, but I know a bunch of you guys were. Um, brilliant, brilliant play on both of these, like huge returns I saw with you guys. Look at that. So again, here, not too dissimilar to Kyber Network, you have the first um, regression line that went up and then the second one. Um, and then I'm built a position in BNB. So I know I'm trying to fit a lot of information here really quickly. Basically, what I'm saying in short is that we've pivoted our thesis into focusing mostly on the DeFi sector as part of the intermediary because it's showing so much strength orders of magnitude higher than the rest of the sector if played properly. So that's interesting. Um, and recently, Binance uh, went ahead and created BurgerSwap, which is a variation of Uniswap. You can trade cross-chain assets, etc. Um, and you can provide liquidity to their pool using your Binance token and you're recorded or rewarded as an LP. It's a government's token. So bing, bang, boom, there is Binance's 
uh, DeFi play. And also, it appears that we've made a smaller accumulation zone. Okay, I'm just going to, again, messy drawings were mid trade, but here you go. Top of the box. Um, we'll make it red so it's maybe a little bit more noticeable. Top of the box. And we'll make it a big, wide one. Bam. Top of the box. Bottom of the box. We saw an ascending gradient come through, a breakout, and a backup. So we're looking for strength above the channel right now and to continue. And I do believe Binance is going to print us something very similar to what Tron did. So for those of you that were there for the Tron trade, um, this beautiful run up after this backup phase. And I believe again, Tron is actually about to make a smaller reaccumulation zone here um, and do the same thing again because they have a large market operator. I don't see why not. And then you start to see how these bigger pictures look the same. So we'll use uh, three of these as an example. So hopefully I'm not moving too quickly. If I am, I apologize. Sign up for our private bear group so you can learn more. Uh, Links are down below. So here we see Tron moving out of the box. The LPS supply going higher each time. Okay, patience, patience pays off there. And then let's use Kyber Network as an example because it's been it's a little bit further ahead. Right here is your first breakout, uh, your first um, SOS down here, and then your breakout, and then an LPS test, and then a breakout, and then it's testing again. And then I think we're gonna have another breakout. So what we can see here <laughs> with Tron is okay. First SOS, second SOS, likely more are coming. So I'm looking at building a position in Tron, although I'm waiting for change of character in both Tron and Binance. Whew. Anyways, it's a lot of information. I actually wanted to make a bit more of a fun video today, but there's so much to be updated on, and this changes a big focus in my thesis. So I still am sitting on part of my trade in Binance, or sorry, in Bat and Matic, um, and I will likely be as soon as they go back into any range of profit, I'm going to close them. It's fine. I'm patient enough to just sit on it, even if I have to dig into a loss for a moment. It will go back into profit, and then I'll just close it out, and I'll. I'll Okay, great. I learned my lesson. Bat, on the other hand, um, it may actually make a store, like blazing home recovery. I, I'm not going to bet against that yet. So um, as soon as it starts to go back up, I just I'm going to characteristically now let off 70 to 90 percent of the position. Whereas I think I only sold like 30 to 40, uh, and then dragged around 60 percent of the position all the way to the bottom. So I'm basically like oh, at break even. <laughs> um, not a great feeling uh, to have done so well on this initial entry and then trade at 40% to have it dragged back down here. Um, but at the same point, just the same thing we saw with Algo, just be patient for that then. Take these much bigger profits in the SOS phases and hold on to less. Even though something like Tron might happen where you take 70 to 90% of your position, you don't even re-enter all the way before it breaks up. Well, look, it doesn't matter. Look, you've, you might even have another opportunity to get in before it explodes like madness again, right? So I'm um, really excited, guys. There's a lot of good trades coming our way. Um, even though the market sentiments are going to be volatile, just be nimble. Um, if you're new to trading, I would suggest that you really take what I'm about to say into account. Knowing and learning and figuring out where you are in the market by being able to take these long perspectives and becoming accustomed to that by not even trading, just taking the camel out and take, taking it as far back until you can see the entire pyramid from afar and say, ah, look at that majesty of how much has gone into building this particular sentiment. Because if you get caught up in the daily, you get caught up in the hype, you're going to lose money. If you see other people making a lot of money, chances are they've gotten lucky and it won't last. Knowing where you are in the market is maybe even more, it's look, it's more valuable than being in the market. Because once you know, then you know where you should be to be on the right side of the market. This is Tia with the Arcane Bear. Thank you guys all for joining us. I really appreciate it. To all the private Bear Den members, thank you guys. We've got some more PDFs coming out for you this month's newsletter, which is again shifting and pivoting towards trying to digest and understand this very quickly evolving DeFi sector that is ridiculously exciting. The fact that um, there's a burger swap made by Binance now and educational videos around how to even use this stuff because I don't have a clue what I'm doing really either. Um, so a great learning process. I'm really look forward to it. Um, I'll try to be more uh, consistent with the videos during the week so that when we have these big revelations, it doesn't. Uh, I'm not going to have to try to slam it all into one video. But basically what that means, I've, I've added every single DeFi token to the list and I'm charting the characteristics because this sector, this space in our little ecosystem is orders of magnitude m more responsive on the recoil than, than the rest of the sector. So 
that got my attention. Anyways, we'll leave you guys with that uh, and the logo. Everyone likes a little logo transition. Boom.